Hello and welcome every. No. 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 Okay, good. Right. Now that we've sorted, welcome to Talk Adventures with Mr. Solomon. Uh, this is our second use instead of a DSLR. We're going to look at a TLR. T L R. Tango Lima Romeo. Okay, and we have two cameras we're going to show you today. The first being this rather nice ensign. So you're trying to work out what T L R would stand for. Okay, the easiest letter is probably the L. All cameras, most cameras have this somewhere on the front of the camera body. So what could the L be? And the T, I'll show you this one as well. So the way to work out the T is to ask yourself what these two cameras have in common. Because they're quite different. What do they both have that we could describe using the letter T? So the L is the lens. How many lenses are there? There are two. Okay, could be two lens, sounds a bit weird. It's called twin, twin lens. There are twin lenses on both these cameras. Please excuse the gloves. But I don't want to get fingerprints on the cameras. Why don't I want to get fingerprints on the cameras? Well, it can tarnish the metal, can damage the leather work. And as you can see, these cameras are already quite damaged. I don't really want to make them any worse. So we have two lenses, so we call that twin lens. There's your lens, one there, one there, one there. And one there. The R stands for reflex. So when we take a photo, there are mechanical things that happen, there are mechanical operations that happen inside the camera. You often hear a click or a winding sound, maybe. And that is something happening inside the camera that allows it to take a photo. Okay, so we're going to start with this one here. So just put this one away. Okay, so. This is a British camera, as we can see at the front. This is made in England. The model name is Full View. Okay, a bit of a play on the words Full View, as in you can see everything in full. Okay, this is a TLR twin lens reflex. So it has two lenses. Okay. However, that does not mean it's going to take two photos. All right. This lens is the one used to take the photo. Inside, there is something which captures the photo and allows you to print it so that you can use it, look at it. Okay, so we have the primary lens, which is used to take the photo. We then have another lens. Well, why do we have another lens? What is the point? If it doesn't take a photo, why would you put it there? Why would someone do that? Well, if I turn it up, hopefully you can see. You see what I can see without directly looking at it. Okay, good. So, as you can see, we have Shrek. Even though you cannot see my screen, you can see him as clear as day. Okay, think about a submarine. They have what we call a periscope. So you have a mirror at 45 degrees, which allows the light reflecting off an image to travel in through that lens, so through the lens, bouncing off the mirror at 90 degrees. It then travels up onto this magnifying glass element or, you know, large piece of glass. And it allows us, so like in a submarine, like a periscope, it allows you to see something you wouldn't normally be able to see. So how do you take a photo of a camera like this? Well, you walk around with it like this, looking down. Okay, so your face is here, looking down. I don't know why I don't just use my face to show that. And you're looking down into there, and then you can see what you want to take a photo of. Okay, it's a very different way of taking a picture. Okay, and I can tell you now that this camera is designed for a child. So it's made out of metal, 
It's small, it's not very heavy, it's easy to hold. It would have a strap attached here and here, but I've taken that off because it needs fixing. Okay, and this would be a camera used by a child, and they would have been very cheap, very easy to get hold of. Okay, and the child would walk around looking down through there. So they're seeing the image through this, and then when they're ready, they take a photo through that lens. And the button, we call that the shutter release. That's a small lever here, so if I push it, hopefully you'll hear it click. There you go. And that high pitch sound, that's a spring pushing it back. Okay, we have another switch here. This is to do with how long we take the photo for. So we can either do a very quick click, like that, or if it's very dark, we can switch that and we can hold it down for a bit longer and that will let a little bit more light in and it will make the photo a little bit brighter. Okay, if you've done photography with me before we've done light painting, it's very similar to the bulb function that I've shown you before. Okay, over here we would have had a lever for changing the aperture for how much light can come in. So think about your eye, the way your eye lets in less or more light. Okay, in fact, hold on. Okay, so this is aperture. It controls how much or how little light can enter the camera. And obviously, the wider, the more light, the narrower, the less light. Another very simple control it has is up here. This is the focus or focal ring. And it just twists. Really hard to twist with these gloves. Okay. And it simply twists forwards and back. Okay. It has the number six. And it has a small symbol. It's like a number eight on its side. So the six refers to six feet. Okay. So if you're taking a photo of a flower or a dog, you would need to be six feet away. I will tell you what that is in meters later because I don't know. And next to it we have the number 8 on its side, which is the symbol for infinity. Okay, if you're not sure what that looks like, I'll quickly draw it. And it means forever and ever. And ever so if you switch it to that never so if you were taking photos of say a church in the distance or the sky with clouds or trees or forest and you wanted all of the image to be in focus then you would put it on that setting so again it's very simple for a child do you want close up six feet away or do you want literally everything in the distance okay i think now would be a good time to have a quick look inside uh, if you didn't see it the back has a small uh, well, knob that you turn, and I'll explain what that's for in a minute. Okay, it should have a small piece of red plastic which is missing. I imagine when I open this up, I will find it. I haven't opened this up yet, so let's wait and see. Uh, we have a simple lock and unlock mechanism. Uh, we have a simple lock. An unlock mechanism you just turn it it's got arrows again to make it nice and simple for child although I can't open it okay yeah it's open and if I lift this out there's a bit of red plastic that I told you we'd find hey look at this the original label ask for ensign size 20 film it's got a small box of it there very retro, very vintage colour scheme there. Okay, that's a bit of a clue as to what would go in here. Size 20 film. Okay. We have what we call a spool. So if you've ever seen um, a roll of sewing thread, it, that's also on a spool. So it's like a sort of circular sort of cylinder shape that it's wrapped around. Okay. So with this, we can remove this. And we 
you can hopefully just about see a narrow slot along there. Okay, so that's where our size 20 film is going to go. Okay, that you'd have bought with your pocket money if you own this camera. You'd be attaching that in there. You can pull your film along here. So we have two metal spindles. Okay, they allow the film to roll smoothly, so they gently roll as I touch them. It will go across. Now this bit where it goes across is really important. We'll come back to that in a minute. So it goes across. And then you would click it in here. So uh, the, the, the spool that the film you bought on, that would attach on there. Okay. I can show you what that would look like, sort of. It would look something a little bit like this. That would attach in. Okay, that would attach like that. The film would be going across here, down there, and connecting to this spool. Okay, and up here we have another silver knob which allows us to wind, twist, or turn like that and that is what pulls the film from here across those silver spindles and onto that okay this film unravels i'm not going to do it now because this is one that i've used and i'd like to print it so i can't show you it right now but i might show you when i've printed it okay you can fit 12 photos okay so not very many your little child would have to choose very carefully you can't just go out and go snap snap because they use all their photos Okay, so um, they might go out and take maybe three photos or a couple of photos on a walk and try and spread it out over time. Okay, so 12 photos. And what happens if you wind it too far? Well, you, you waste your photos. You will only be able to fit maybe 10 or 8 or 6. Okay, and if you don't wind it enough, then you run the risk of, um, well, overlapping your photos. So you might have a photo of a dog kind of mixed in with a photo of a cat which would be a bit weird okay so you wouldn't want to do that because guess what this stuff probably wasn't cheap okay right so if it's so risky or so difficult to try and get it in the right do you know well remember i said to you about this area and i also mentioned the small red plastic bit well through this little plastic window you would be able to see numbers numbers printed on the side of this film okay so this is where the child might go to the parent or maybe they've practiced at home and they know what the different numbers mean it's a bit like a code it tells you how far to wind it, it tells you when to stop and it tells you how many photos you have left okay so again if i can um buy another one of these i will show you that because i know you'd like to see it um i might there might be one actually in here so we, we will see in a minute okay I will, I will glue that back at some point. The, the silver knob here is so that you can close it because what you don't want is that open all the time because you run the risk of sunlight getting in and we don't want the sunlight to get in because that is what is going to make the film turn grey or black. Okay, because remember, the only time we want light to come into our camera is when we press this, the shutter release, and when we are controlling how much light we do or don't want it to the camera. We don't want light everywhere. We don't want light touching this until we take a photo. Otherwise it will make the film go black, ruin it, you won't be able to see your picture. Okay. So if the child using this you need to be very careful never to unlock this unless they knew they had used all 12 photos which they would know by looking through there and reading the code on the back okay so that is the full view ensign made in england okay i would say 
anywhere between 30s and 50s this model um, it would be easy to tell if I had the box or the instruction manual but I don't it didn't come with either of those things um, it was very cheap um, you can see there's lots of little things that I probably need to fix and repair as well so when I've done that I'll probably show you or bring it in school so that you can kind of have a look okay cool Mr. Solomon, welcome to his class. Today you're going to learn some photography, not economic geography. Take a seat. Make sure your work is not incomplete. Before you go in class, make sure your shoes are neat, just like Mr. Solomon's feet. Mr. Solomon.